polar coordinates. We work with that in the first unit. It's all based off of the knowledge of the unit circle, expanded to have infinite radius uh, or any possible radius, variable radius. All cylindrical coordinates are, because we know a, cylind a cylinder is just a circle with height. Cylindrical coordinates are representing your X and Y values in terms of R's and thetas, but your Z is still Z, right? So there's nothing, nothing really new here, right? So the quick example at the bottom of page 77, convert the cylindrical coordinates into rectangular coordinates, very straightforward because we have an R value and we have a theta value and we have a Z value, right? R comma theta comma Z. That's that's what cylindrical coordinates are, right? Instead of X, Y, Z, it's R theta Z. So I need an X and I need a Y, but I already have the Z. So that's not bad, not too bad at all. So what I would do is I'd figure out X by computing R cosine theta. In this case, four cosine two pi over three. So four times negative a half is negative two. Y is equal to R sine theta. So four sine two pi over three. So four times negative root three over two. So negative two radical three. So the cylindrical coordinates here, so therefore, we would be looking at negative two comma negative two radical three comma negative two. All right, so that, that's really all there is to it. When you're plotting again in, uh, in Desmos, when you're plotting coordinates in cylindrical form, I'm sorry, cylindrical, overused already, um, polar form, put your, graph in polar coordinate form, and then you can plot your, your values. Right? So we'd have four comma two pi over three. So I have it in, no, I have it in radians, what happened? Oh, Lord only knows. Oh, you know what? I just, I assumed for some reason that it was just going to work because I wanted it to. Um, sorry, you put the computation in. So, four cosine. 2 pi over 3, comma, 4 sine 2 pi over 3. There we go. So it gives us the, uh, the conversion, but it gives us the conversion in decimal form. Which is fine if you want to check. If you want to check your work, that's perfectly fine. Now, what it won't do is give this to us with height. But if you kind of imagine that this is really the base, you know, just like we've been talking about, the, the base of a solid, you know, and that base is circular, then that height would be corresponding with whatever the z value is. The algebra does a nicer job with this, you know, the three dimensional stuff, but you can at least get a sense of whether your x and y values are. Are correct. All right. So on page 77, uh, 78, we go the other way, convert into uh, convert the rectangular coordinates into cylindrical coordinates. So I have an X, I have a Y, and Z is going to be equal to Z. I need an R theta Z. All right. So R is equal to the square root of X squared plus Y squared. So 
one squared plus negative three squared. So this is a, a nice little capsule summary of what we did in the first unit, a little refresher. It's like the um, first couple of minutes of a, of a TV show where it's like previously on whatever. That's, that's what we're looking at here. All right, so we're looking at one plus nine squared of 10. And then I just need a way of coming up with data. You know, you pick your favorite uh, variation on the formula. Uh, I happen to like the, uh, the, the tangent one. You know, so theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x, All right? So inverse tangent, because it, it makes use of the values that are just flat out given to you. You don't have to rely on a computation that you already made, All right? So it's going to give uh, the way I have my Desmos. It's going to give us a value in terms of theta. So um, I'm sorry, duh. Of course, it'll be in terms of theta. It'll be in terms of radiance, is what I meant to say. Right. So the inverse tangent of negative three is about negative one point two four nine. Right. So that's our value in radian form. So negative one point two four nine. Uh, this is radiance. Right. It's important that you you just make the distinction between um, the, uh, the the different forms in which you can represent your answer. Uh, the, the the issue that people run into is that they give an answer and uh, and they intend for it to be in degrees or versus radians. You know, a, de a degree symbol goes a long way. That's all I can say there. Right. So therefore, we would be saying uh, radical ten. For the r, the negative 1.249 for the theta. If you want to put a little power of r to represent radian, not a bad idea. You don't have to do that though. Again, if you don't put notation, if you don't put a symbol, I assume radians. If if you want to tell me degrees, put a degree symbol. All right, uh, and five. All right, so r theta z is what we're looking for. Now we could also have surfaces in polar form. It's it's a little bit of a, a different sort of uh, animal, but it's definitely doable. All right. So in the case of the first one, r squared, we know that that's the same as x squared plus y squared. We have the plus z squared is equal to nine. So what we're looking at here, so this, that was ugly. This came from this relationship. What we're looking at is a sphere with radius equal to three. All right. But when it comes to theta equals pi over four, you, like you just pick your pick your poison, you know whatever you want to do. We just established that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x, so why not, right? Inverse tangent of y over x is equal to pi over four. Take the tangent of both sides. All right, let me shorten up my arrow here. So I would be taking the tangent of this entire thing. And so tangent of an inverse tangent cancels. You have y over x. Tangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1. And you simplify, you get y equals x. All right. So because we're living in cylindrical coordinates, that means we're living in three dimensions. So a linear looking equation in three dimensions is actually the equation of a plane. Right, because it's implied that this is for all z. And then the last one, that that's a little bit of a different story, right? Because you might be able to get it into the appropriate form. Actually, by might, I mean you definitely can. It's very easy. Right? So I'll just rewrite it over here. We have z equals r. Z 
would be equal to, we established previously that R could be thought of as the square root of X squared plus Y squared. All right, so that's in rectangular form. It's just a question of what on earth is that? Well, like the square both sides like we did before, Z squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. If I get everything over to the same side, I'd be looking at X squared plus Y squared is uh, minus Z squared is equal to zero. So at first glance, it's like, well, it kind of looks like a sphere, except it's got a minus sign. In it. So what on earth could that be? Well, the answer is that it's a hyperboloid of one sheet. And you're like, oh, where'd you pull that out from? Well, I just made it up just now. No. Uh, that's actually the subject of the third technology assignment, right? And it's, it's kind of, we're kind of at the point now where we really can't do much in terms of analyzing a lot of these graphs unless we know what to expect when we see the, uh, the equation. Uh, Desmos and GeoGebra only get you so far, but let me just pull up a, a GeoGebra real quick. I'll pop this in, assuming it'll let me. We'd have, uh, I'll just put it in its radical form, Z equals the square root of X squared plus Y squared. All right, so that figure, you know, you can zoom out. If you were to, and you zoom out, it just makes it look pretty much the same, just maybe a little bit bigger. Um, you, you look at that and you say, well, what, what on earth is that? You know, you can get a top down view. You can, you can spin it around. It's, it, it looks like a cone in, in some capacity, but it also looks like it may be uh, something else. You know, so it's kind of hard to tell. It looks like maybe it has absolute value function qualities, right? If you decompose this into two variables, Right, so you get a cross section, it actually ends up being a hyperbola, right? But only one sheet, because as you know, hopefully hyperbolas can have multiple parts to it, right? So the corresponding hyperbola for this one would only have one part, right? That's really what, what I mean by one sheet, right? So what I'm going to ask you to do, because I'm going to stop the lesson here, because after this, it's we get into <clears throat> volumes and stuff, and you can see there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, I'm going to stop the recording here and just talk to you very briefly about the next technology assignment. Okay.